Good afternoon, I'm Keith Lubezinski with GMDC and welcome to today's video cast. Our goal today on uh, this video cast is hopefully to provide those of you that are attending GMDC conference for the first time, some helpful insights um, and be able to answer any questions that you have regarding the conference. And also if you're an attendee of past conferences, hopefully you'll learn some new things from some of our members uh, regarding how to make uh, the conference uh, truly a success and how to maximize your time uh, while you're at the event. I know there are, are some best practices um, and we thought the best thing to do would be able to share those with you um, from our members directly and, and, and allow you to also answer or ask them questions so that they can provide you uh, some answers to uh, maybe some things that they've done to make the conference even more successful for them as we move forward. So we'd like to just take a little bit of time to just identify what our goals will be for this meeting. Um, first of all, I'm just going to take a short time to just give you a, a short overview of the conference. Um, also explain a little bit about the conference meeting formats. We're going to spend a lot of time on the controlled casual conferences or what you're going to hear a lot of CCC meetings. Um, but also just to let you know a little bit about the senior executive conference meetings. Um, which are taking place at the beginning of the conference, and maybe some of you aren't um, involved with those, but just so that you're aware of what they are, especially as you continue your involvement with GMDC in the future at future conferences. Um, but the mainstay of the, of the video cast today will be to allow you to have discussion, and we'll have discussion with a few of our, our members and advisory board members and board members uh, from both a retailer wholesaler perspective and also from a supplier company perspective. Uh, so that they can provide uh, their input to suggestions that um, have made the conference a success for them, and then to allow you to ask them questions. And that's probably where I want to let you know today. Um, below your screen or to the side of your screen, there's an instant messaging chat session window. Um, feel free to um, type in questions that you may have for the panel, because after I get through the first initial slides, um, we'll have a little bit of a panel discussion. Um, but also then try to answer as many of the questions that may come in from the instant chat uh, session that you've provided to us. So feel free anytime during the session or at the end to uh, an uh, answer your uh, questions in that box below the screen or to the side of your screen. So let's get going a little bit. Um, first, let me just explain a little bit about the two meeting formats that I discussed, the controlled casual conference meeting CCCs and the senior executive conference meetings SECs. Um, just a short uh, information on the senior executive conferences. Those actually are on the first day of the conference on Friday all day. Um, those are 30 minute meetings um, that are mutually matched meetings that both our wholesale retail members and our associate supplier and service company members um, mutually decide to enter and put their names into meeting request. And then we mutually match those meetings. Those meetings are hosted by the supplier and service company members in separate meeting rooms, and those will be 30-minute meetings happening all day on Friday. The controlled casual conference meetings, which I think the majority of you will be involved in, which is the mainstay of the conference, are 10 and 20-minute meetings um, that will be held on the controlled conference casual floor. And uh, those meetings that will be either a 10 or 20 minute meeting selected by the wholesale retail member. Um, everybody should have gotten their schedules this week, but we'll talk a little bit more if you don't know how to get to those uh, as we move through the slides here. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to answer any other questions that you may have regarding the controlled casual conference meetings. And also how you can use the conference um, in between the, the CCC meetings to, uh, to network but also how if you do make a connection, um, either a, a retailer may have seen a item in a showcase or you met at a reception that you'd like to schedule an additional meeting, how you can also do that uh, while you're at the conference. So let me um, just give you a couple of quick guides to um, how to make the conference a success and some of the things that you might be able to do ahead of time. Um, first of all, on the website um, in uh, at www.gmdc.org in the conference area, there are some conference checklists for both retail wholesale members and supplier service company associate members. Um, please take the time to look at those. Um, they do provide you a, a little bit of a checklist to um, of things that you should be involved in, what you can be prepared with before you get to the conference and why you're at the conference. Um, secondly, on that conference page also, there is a video that's out there right now about Controlled Casual Conference, or CCC, what we call training. It's a video cast that we had done a while ago 
um, that is archived and, and recorded uh, as long as this one will. So you'll be able to watch this video cast again. If you uh, forgot something, you want to look at an insight, it'll be available at GMDC Connect uh, in the archive section. But that training video cast actually takes you through how to prepare for a CCC meeting. Um, and we actually have two templates that are available to you that we'll talk a little bit more. I'm just going to show you the last page of that and a couple slides here um, that allow you to step through in a 10 minute meeting or 20 minute meeting. What are the key things you should be prepared with in a presentation as a supplier to be provided to a retailer? Um, and hopefully that will uh, give you some idea as far as preparation, because you, some people will say, I only have 10 minutes for a meeting. Um, how do I prepare? What should I have prepared uh, for that meeting? But more importantly, it'll allow you um, to also, um, at the end of that meeting, to bring some closure or what's the next steps for those meetings. So I'll get to that in a little bit more um, as I review the, the CCC meeting template. Um, and more importantly, I'm just going to look at that last slide. Um, secondly, and hopefully you all have your credentials to the My GMDC area, which is the member area uh, on the website. Um, here is where once you log in, the majority of the personalized company information that you have available will be located in the My Conference Center once you log in. Um, here you're going to be able to see the actual attendees of the conference um, by company. Um, you can also see your schedules here. Um, if you haven't found them already, um, you can actually print your schedules. Um, so make sure that you look at that. Um, there's also shipping information that's available there. If you want to ship samples to the conference, there is a separate shipping label that we ask that you utilize um, because it allows us to make sure it's in the sample room for you so that it's easily accessible along with any other information that you have regarding the conference. Um, please look in the My Conference Center um, under the 2014 GM conference area. Probably another big important thing is a guide to success is um, in the conference area under the attendees and attendee companies, whether you're a supplier company or associate uh, service company, um, you should be able to look up and research any of the retailer wholesaler companies that are attending that um, the conference. And if you have a meeting with them, I would recommend that you do research if you're not aware of who the company is regarding the type of stores they have, how many stores they have, where they're located where they do business so that it prepares you a little bit before you meet with them. Um, all of our retailer wholesaler companies are also able to do the same thing of looking at our supplier service companies, what products they carry, who are the main individuals. Um, and I would ask that if you do not have your company profile up to date in the My GMDC area, each of you can update your company profile, um, update your um, individuals that are involved from your company um, in GMDC because both our retail wholesale members will use your profiles as far as follow-up or contacts that they may need to make with you afterwards and vice versa. Um, our, our retailer wholesalers information, we ask that that information is kept up too. Suppliers can look at that when they do their research. So they're much better prepared to meet with you regarding how many stores you may have, et cetera. Um, for those of you that are uh, on this video cast, um, we do also recommend that you attend the first time uh, attendee orientation. It's not just limited to first time attendees. It's anybody that's looking to learn a little bit more. Uh, we do have um, a first time orientation on the first night of uh, at the conferences, um, Friday, uh, for whether it's a health and beauty or a general merchandise conference. And then also for those at the GM conference for the second group that are coming in um, on Sunday evening. Um, at those sessions, we will also prepare, you know, be able to give you a little bit of an overview of the conference again. Uh, we'll actually do the meeting on the uh, CCC meeting floor so you get comfortable to what it's going to look like um, as you come to the conference. A and then answer any questions and provide any further information we can for you. Also, I would recommend prior to getting to the conference is to download the conference mobile app because it will give you the schedule of the day, attendees, um, and other information that would be available for you. You'll also have that available to you in the conference guide. Uh, once you register at the conference, um, you will be have access to a conference guide, which is a printed material um, that will allow you to uh, look at attendees, the schedule, et cetera. But the mobile app uh, is available to you ahead of time that you can get in the conference page uh, at, at the website. So please make sure you uh, get the chance to download the mobile app and give you a little bit of a insight before you get to the conference. Um, a couple things too. 
we want to make sure besides this video cast and helping you out that there are other individuals we're going to talk today to a few of our members and our board members um but please when you get to the conference um, if you have any questions need help or assistance to please um, look to the board of directors or any of the advisory boards or gmdc staff um, to answer any questions you have how we can assist you etc um, we were all first timers at one time um, so please reach out to them they're more than helpful um, to provide guidance in anything that you may have probably the most important though um, Thing is just don't look at your controlled casual conferences or your senior executive conferences um, meetings to be the only time that uh, you should be engaged at the conference um, we want you to be connected um, not only at the conference but hopefully throughout the year with GMDC and the staff and members and you can do that in a number of ways at the conference and after the conference um, a couple things to be aware of there's a lot of uh, vehicles or networking opportunities that are provided at the conference for you um, to also meet with your peers on, uh, on issues or opportunities they may have. Everybody seems to be, we're all there together, um, all with the same objectives to grow our businesses. And uh, GMDC is there as hopefully uh, to help you in that regards. But there's also places that meet beyond the, the CCC meetings or an SEC meeting at breakfasts, lunches, um, at our networking receptions, especially the showcase review. Um, the showcase review is an opportunity for those of you that have um, items in that in the showcase to be able to actually discuss with the our retail wholesale members during that reception period and a more casual um, atmosphere. Also, don't forget to take advantage of the evening with the chairman event. Um, it's really our, our chairman and all the advisory board co-chairs to host an evening where we can bring everybody together in a networking uh, event. Um, business sessions, there's an opportunity to learn from industry experts about things that are happening within the industry or best practices insights. Um, both our retail wholesalers and our supplier and uh, service company members are all together uh, in those sessions. You're able to ask questions, uh, learn more um, about the industry and what's happening. Also at some of our events and conferences, um, especially upcoming general merchandise conference, we will have store tours available. Um, for those of you on Sunday afternoon, um, we have an open session between our GM conference group A and group B, our weekend and weekday sessions. On Sunday afternoon, there are store tours that will be available to everybody. Or another great way to network with um, other individuals um, is our educational golf tournament event on Sunday afternoon. So please make sure you take advantage of any of those opportunities as you're at the conference to extend your reach beyond just your CCC or SEC meetings. Finally, and probably most important, and what we want to spend a lot of our time today is how do you make the controlled casual conferences and your meetings more productive for you? Um, this slide right now is just a little bit of, a, of experience of what you're going to see on the floor um, at the CCC conference floor. It's going to be a busy time. Um, a lot of meetings happening. I think we have almost 10,000 meetings on average at each individual conference that will take place. So you can imagine um, it's going to be a very busy time with all these meetings happening every 10 or 20 minute um, time frame at, at the conference. You are going to have, um, as I mentioned earlier, a couple of templates on the uh, GMDC conference page that I would ask that you would look at. We have one um, about a six page template that allows you um, to prepare for a meeting with maybe a company that you're meeting with for the first time. For a supplier service company, if you're doing business with the company for the first time, have not done business with them, there's a separate presentation there for you to utilize. And then there's also a separate template for a company that you may be doing business with already or have done business in the past. That template is just a little bit different. But probably the most important part, that template will step you through um, some information that you should have available and prepared for your meeting. But most importantly is the last slide, which I'm showing here. Um, and that's the, the ability at the end of the meeting to bring some closure to your discussion. Um, when you're in your CCC meetings, when there is one minute left at nine minutes, um, if you're in a 10 minute meeting, or of course, at the 19th minute, if you're in a 20 minute meeting, you're gonna hear one minute, one minute on the loudspeaker. 
Um, and at that point, we're asking that you pretty much close up your discussion and bring it to some type of a closure. And we kind of use what we call this green light, yellow light, red light slide um, to really um, close up the meeting so you know what your follow-up or next steps will be. We ask our wholesaler retail members to be prepared to give you an answer as far as what should next steps be. And we'd also ask our whole our supplier companies and service company members to really ask that final question, you know, how should I follow up? Should I recap? Um, and if it's a yes within two weeks, um, to mark that as, you know, it's a green light that yes, we want to um, recap this meeting or schedule a call for a follow up meeting. Um, if it's a little bit longer, because some of our retail wholesale members may be looking or reviewing a category, let's say a couple months down the road, uh, that would be a yellow one. You don't need to follow up right away, but you know, in a couple of months, they're going to need to have that information, so they do that. And for some reason, if there's just not uh, a reason to do business on that a product or a company at this time, um, then there's actually a, a red light that there's no action needed right now, and it saves everybody's um, time and efforts. Um, regarding follow-up, that if it's not right at this time, um, that both our retail and wholesaler members um, are prepared to let that supplier or service company know, and vice versa as far as what are the next steps. So that's probably why we call this a, a green light, yellow light, red light um, slide at the end um, within that last minute to close up what are going to be the next follow-up activities. Because you're going to hear a lot from, I think, during the panel discussion, um, the need to follow up, especially if there's been some type of recommended action at the end of your CCC uh, meeting. Finally, um, a lot of you will have meetings at the conference. Uh, you already have your schedules if you've looked online. There is a process uh, to add meetings at the conference, as I had mentioned. Um, there will be on-site meeting request forms. Every supplier service company will have a mailbox in the CCC lounge area. All of our retailer wholesale members have an in and out box on their desk. Um, if there is a, a retailer wholesaler member that you would like to do have a meeting with that you may not have one pre-scheduled, um, or maybe they had seen an item of yours in the showcase um, and maybe had uh, you had gotten a scan from them that they're interested, you can request an on-site meeting form, uh, meeting with them. You just complete the, the form, drop it in into that wholesaler retailer's inbox um, between your meetings. Uh, the wholesaler retailer will then look at what times maybe that you had available, see if it matches up to them, and then put a recommendation back to you. And those slips will then be returned to you in your mailbox. Um, so uh, I just want to make sure you're aware of that. We'll have that information at the registration desk. We'll also have it at the first time attendees meeting uh, to answer any questions you may have regarding that process. Uh, just a few things just to end before we get here to uh, introducing our panel. Um, there are a couple guidelines, short guidelines that we just ask that you um, take into account on the CCC floor. Number one is make sure you're on time for your appointment. You only have 10 minutes or 20 minutes, so make sure you're on time and you also respect the time for the next person because um, once that time is called for the next meeting, most times the next supplier vendor meetings is going to be ready to sit down with that uh, retailer wholesaler. Um, also, as we said earlier, at, when you hear the one minute uh, warning announcement. We do ask that you close your meeting so you're prepared then to uh, to move on to your next meeting. We also ask, because it's going to be so busy on the controlled casual conference floor, um, that if you do not have a meeting, that you do use that time out in the CCC lounge outside of the conference floor and, and, and be out there during your um, non-scheduled time. Um, to be out in the CCC lounge so we don't have interruption on the floor with people that do have scheduled meetings. And just from a safety um, reason, we do ask that we, you prohibit from bringing rolling carts. Um, you're going to see when the time is called, there's a lot of people moving across the floor. Um, uh, we, we would request that you do not uh, use a, a rolling cart. We don't want people to be tripping over each other and, and try to carry the materials and samples with you if all possible. So that's all the short guidelines I have. And I think what we really want to do now is introduce our panel that we have with us today. Um, and I appreciate them taking their time because they're busy. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, introduce them. Mitch Terry is our Vice President of Sales and Merchandising for GMHBC at Associated Grocers of Florida. Um, Mitch, welcome. And we also have Ed Mitchell, the VP of Sales, Melita USA, um, and Michelle King, Director of Sales of Earthtronics. So at this time, I'd like to just move to the panel and start with a, a little bit of a discussion with each one of them. 
Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you. Just to let everybody know, um, Mitch uh, Terry is um, our on our board of directors at GMBC, and he'll be uh, hopefully able to represent the wholesaler retailer perspective uh, in our discussion today. So, uh, Mitch, uh, welcome from Florida. Um, Ed Mitchell, um, just to let you know, is the co-chair of our membership advisory board also. Um, so we will look forward to his input from a, a supplier perspective. Um, and also he's interested in what everybody here on the call has to say from a membership perspective too. And then Michelle, welcome. Michelle is our immediate past chair of our general merchandise advisory board too. So um, not all are these individuals uh, veterans, um, but hopefully they'll be able to answer a lot of your questions and provide you insights. And as I said, they're not only, um, hopefully it will give you some of their best practices and input, um, but they're also very interested in comments that you have and you'll be able to meet them and talk to them more at the conference at the same time. So why don't we uh, get going? Um, I have a few questions that I know that um, everybody probably has um, that I'd like to ask at first, and then I'll go to some of the questions that may have come in uh, during our discussion online. Um, maybe Mitch, I'll start with you. Um, you know, from a wholesaler retailer perspective, um, why don't you explain how, how to, from your perspective, how to make the conference a success from a wholesaler retailer perspective? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for joining us this afternoon. It's, I know it's tough on a Friday afternoon to, uh, to pull away, but we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, a little bit from a wholesaler perspective, uh, Associated Grocers of Florida, we're, we're a small wholesaler in the grand scheme of things. Uh, we're independently owned, uh, so these conferences are key for us. Uh, they're key for us to, to choose items, find partnerships, and build relationships uh, with with the supplier community. And uh, you know they they've been beneficial to us, and you know over the over the years to find the new items, to actually meet one on one with a lot of the key players. Uh, in, in different organ supplier organizations that we don't get the opportunity to see. Uh, you know, we represent, uh, you know, like, like I said, independent wholesale, independent supermarkets. And uh, in the grand scheme of things with, you know, the Walmarts of the world and the large chains, uh, they don't get a lot of attention. But these conferences have been, have been able to uh, let us go one-on-one -on -one with those key suppliers and see new items. And, uh, and, and again, it's, it's been key for us. Uh, we use these conferences to build our promotional plans for the year. Uh, we have two major shows a year, uh, and this is where we go to find those items for our shows uh, to present to our membership. And uh, that's, th th those are you know, key objectives for us. So th these, these conferences are a key piece of our, our uh, yearly business objectives. Terrific. Well, why don't we hear from the, uh, on the other side, from the supplier side, maybe I'll start with you, Michelle, first, you know, um, as a, as a supplier member, um, an associate, um, how, how do you approach the conference to make it a success? Well, I think you have to really be prepared before you sit down in front of that wholesaler or retailer. I can tell you what not to do right off the bat. Do not sit down and ask them, how many stores do you service? How many stores do you have? Where are they? You want to sit down fully informed of who they are, where they do business, so that you don't waste any of that precious 10 minutes that you have on things that you should have known before you sat down. Um, I think one of the other keys is um, to make sure that as you get toward the end of your meeting that you are wrapping up, that you find out what the follow-up needs to be, and that once you are back in your offices after the conferences, that follow up is key. And you may have to follow up and follow up and follow up to get something rolling, but that's just the nature of everybody's business. Everybody's very busy. Um, as Keith said, there were 10,000 appointments that probably happened during the term of those conferences. So um, it's, it's very, very critical that you continue to follow up and do what you said you would do at the end of your meeting. Okay. And what about from your perspective? Yes, I think certainly being prepared is the, is the key thing, but also have it narrowed down to a few key points that you want to discuss with, with each wholesaler retailer. You may have 40 or 50 items, but 
let's be realistic and, and narrow it down to a short list of things that you want them to remember and take away from your meeting. And as Keith said, there are a lot of opportunities to network and to meet outside of those 10 minute meetings. You might remember later something you want to talk to uh, one of your wholesaler retailers about, and it's a great time to do it, whether it be at a, at a lunch or at a cocktail party or at dinner. So make sure you take advantage of all the networking opportunities too, to not only follow up, but maybe to meet with people you didn't have a, a scheduled 10 minute meeting with. Okay. Um, Mitch, maybe from uh, a wholesaler retailer perspective, let's turn it around and say, what do you expect from the supplier or service companies when they come to meet with you in a CCC meeting? Uh, first of all, I, I expect them to, to really understand who we are, what part of the country we're in, you know, going back to the, the profiles, you know, take a look and, and understand the other word, independent co-op, uh, have that, that preparation done and kind of back to what Ed was saying, you know, try to find out exactly you know, what our needs are, you know, by that profile, you know, we're, we're in South Florida, you know, you, we're, we're in the Caribbean. So, you know, don't be showing us, you know, snow shovels and, uh, and mittens and uh, winter gear. I uh, already have some items narrowed down to exactly what you'd like to show us and like us to consider. Uh, have your key items. You don't try to show too much at one time because it's, you know, it's a, you've got a short time to make your point. And uh, also, you know, go back to you know, the preparation, you know, as the preparation for the conference goes, if for some reason we don't have you on our list or, or we don't have you scheduled, that doesn't mean it's, it's no. You know, go back, submit, you know, through the, through the mail system there, uh, request for times. And when you request that, request a, a certain time. Don't just say the afternoon. You know, give us, give us two or three options on times so that we can choose one. I, I know, uh, you know, from our company's perspective, we're there to see as many as many suppliers as possible. We're usually 110% of our schedule, which means we, we divide up, uh, we, we take an extra table, There's, there are extra tables around, you know, where you can separate and, uh, and, and, and take two appointments at a time. And that's what uh, our company does to try to maximize uh, the supplier from the supplier standpoint as well as from our our time standpoint okay um michelle and ed i know um mitch uh said you know preparation is probably a, a key he really wants to make sure that the suppliers are prepared knowing um who they are um a little bit about them uh, so they're not coming in and utilizing the time um unproductively but are there any other uh, tips that uh, one of either of you two have that uh, you use as far as further preparation for the conference for, for CCC meeting? Well, I, I typically, for everyone I have a meeting with, will go to that particular wholesaler or retailer's website to get a look at, it's a great spot to see where their stores are, maybe see their weekly ad. Um, you kind of get a flavor for who they are and what they do. Um, I also Google them to see what is the latest um, press releases, what are the latest stories in, in the press about this particular company, and is there something within that press release that would make what I'm bringing to show them um, a good fit? Okay. I do the same, and I also use the, uh, the GMDC website, which gives a lot of information on who's attending from a specific wholesaler retailer, what their titles are, a little bit about their roles and responsibilities, so you, you'll need to know that information. Okay. So also to prepare, you also want to have something in your presentation that makes you stand out, that makes you different. So hopefully Mitch and, and the other wholesaler retailers will remember what you talked about uh, after the conference. Okay. So, um, Ed, do you use, um, in some cases, a, a specific presentation or customized to each of your wholesaler retailer meetings? Yes, um, we found the uh, the templates that are on your website very helpful. Um, we also add some things to it um, that um, you know are specific to our items and our products. That uh, so hopefully they'll remember exactly what we talked about. You know, a week or two after the conference. Okay. Well, we talked a little bit about preparation, um, uh, Mitch. Um, what are some of the um, aspects, I guess, coming out of a CCC meeting? What do you guys do after you know? the conference is over, I guess, and or what do you expect from the suppliers after the conference is over? Well, I, after the conference is over, we expect follow-up. I think that's one of the key things. Uh, we get together as a team and look at, 
at the key vendors that we saw and suppliers during the conference and start ranking those and start narrowing down our items of what we're going to look at moving forward. And, uh, but without that follow-up, uh, it, that's, that's one of the most key things that I, that I see, you know, from a, a supplier side is, is make sure you follow up because we'll see probably almost 200 different suppliers during those, those days. And when you come back to the office, it all becomes a blur. That's why we get together right after the show and start putting together some action plans. But be back with us. Uh, you know, we will normally tell suppliers within two to three weeks, get back with us. That's kind of the, uh, kind of the, the point we look for is the, time, the timetable. In the next two to three weeks, get back to us and so that we can bring your items to the table and then also, you know, keep that fresh in our mind. Uh, and also, you know, coming out of the conference, we hope to build more relationships. Uh, I think that's something at GMBC, I, I think, is, is people uh, are in the organization that, that come back from conference to conference. It becomes a, real, it can, a lot of relationships are built. Uh, a lot of people know what, who we are. We know who they are. You know, during the year, if we're looking for something or, we'll, or we need to partner with someone, we know who to contact because of the relationships that have been built. Uh, I think that's that's one of the key things. It's, you know, it becomes a family. And then, the, the, like I said, the relationships are key moving forward. Okay. And, and Mitch brings up a good thing. And I had mentioned earlier, too, why companies should make sure their profiles are up to date. Because, you know, as Mitch said, a lot of our wholesale retail members, um, they may have met somebody at the conference, may not have been right at that time, but they'll go on to the GMBC website, go to look up that company so that they have the contact information to reach back out to them at a different time. So it, it's key that you, you keep your profiles up to date from that standpoint. And one, one other thing, Keith, uh, with the, the showcase, mm -hmm. uh, I think as many of, of our suppliers as possible, if they can stand with their product during during those events and during those networking uh uh, get together get together I mean that's been key because uh, a lot of you know during our time together we may not be able to, to see all the products or completely understand but that's another uh, flashpoint where you can stand with your product and we can see at a later time maybe that evening and talk about your product more and it becomes it, it comes to life when we're able to actually see the displays and, and live product and talk with you okay um, Ed and Michelle, as far as your follow-up um, as a supplier perspective, how, how do you guys approach your follow-up then from the uh, CCC meetings? Well, I think the first thing is uh, at the conclusion of your CCC meeting, at that last one minute of that meeting, make sure you know who the right person to follow up with is. It may not be the, the person uh, at the uh, table that you met with that will be handling your items back in their office. Make sure you know who the right person to follow up with is. And keep in mind, they have 200 meetings. You might have 40 or 50 or 30, whatever the number is. So you may not get an answer on the first time you follow up, but keep following up because they have a lot of things they're working on and they have regular jobs too. So make sure you follow up consistently and with the right person. Okay. Michelle, anything? Well, I think the key to the follow-up is if there are two of you um, doing your meetings, it's much better if one presents and one takes notes. Mm -hmm. um, you will not remember when you're finished with your 18th meeting <laughs> what was said. Now, don't panic if, there are, if there's only one of you that's coming. I have done it probably a dozen times by myself. Um, you get really good at writing very, very quickly and talking at the same time. Um, but it's very key that you... Take those notes, and if you have a break between meetings, look at the notes again. Make sure you had everything in there that you wanted to because it will be very hard to circle back even an hour later to add anything you forgot to write in. Um, so those sheets that are on the template um, that are on the website can be very helpful in reminding you that that's, those are the things you need to have answered in your own mind so that when you do follow up, you're doing uh, following up with the correct person. Okay. Terrific. Well, let's um, go to a few of the questions that are coming in on the chat. And I would mind everybody, if you do have a question, feel free to enter it into the chat session uh, uh, below your screen or on the side of your screen. Um, I guess here is here's one question, and I don't know if this is probably addressed to, to, to Mitch or not, but as a new company, is there much discussion on bracket volume pricing? 
Uh, yes, when, when we're meeting uh, with suppliers, that's that's one of the key issues is, you know, where we're going to be priced. Uh, that's why uh, if the preparation is done in the beginning, you kind of have an idea of our company, our company size, and uh, you can really get to the, the key questions during during that, that time. But yeah, but the, the pricing is, is very key. Okay. Um, here's another question, and, and I guess this can be for both Michelle or Ed or for, for Mitch. Um, is it rude to be taking notes? And I guess this addresses, I'm going to go to Michelle right away. Is it rude to be taking note while in a meeting not to forget ideas or comments? I think, Michelle, I'll, I'll, I'll direct it to you since you addressed it a little bit. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, that would be found as rude. I think it would be found that you're being efficient and that you are going to have the correct information written down so that you can follow up correctly. Mitch, you're, you're the, you kind of represent the wholesale trade here. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Michelle. I mean, I don't, I don't take offense to it because I know how, how precious the time is. And I, I would appreciate someone taking notes to make sure they get the right inf the correct information for the policy. Okay, terrific. Um, here's another question, uh, and Mitch, I'll probably ask this because we have a lot of companies that get into the preview box. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar with the preview box, it's the way to get your new items or new packaging um, into the hands of the retailers prior to the conference because they may not have been familiar with your company or maybe it's a new item you're launching. Um, and if they didn't select you for a meeting, it's another way to make sure they're aware of it. So if they see something they really like that they can um, then schedule a meeting on site. But the question here is, um, I got more people typing in questions, so I just got to back up. Um, <laughs> when, when a buyer does, um, Mitch, in your case, receive their preview box, do they actually pay attention to the items or even take the opportunity to test the quality and performance of the items? Absolutely. I'll give you our, my example. Uh, I go through those at home and I sit with my wife, we go through them and I get her perspective first. Remember that guys, remember, you always get your wife's perspective first. <laughs> and then I actually bring the items here to work and go through the office here and get uh, a consumer's perspective. I'll hand those out uh, to, to different groups in our office and I get their feedback as to what they think about it. So it's not just me looking at the items because you know, there are items that I'll look at and I say, there's, you know, that that's never going to be a winner. Uh, you know, I said the, I said the iPhone would never make it. See what happens. Uh, <laughs> so I, I use other people to give me their feedback to, to see exactly, you know, what, what the items should be and what we should actually look for. I get a different perspective. Okay. Uh, here's another question. Um, is a PowerPoint the best solution for presenting in the 10 minute meetings? Or should we have a handout with this information and just follow through with the with with them, or is a PowerPoint preferred? And maybe from a supplier perspective, Michelle and Ed, you probably have used a variety of different ways to present. Which from from your perspective first? Uh, I've used both. Um, I think certainly uh, if you have a number of meetings, sometimes a PowerPoint is uh, is easier. Whether it be on an iPad, it, it helps you. Uh, of having to carry it, not have to carry too many papers around and binders and things, and uh, uh, you can be consistent that way. And it's uh, it's probably more efficient to do that. And then you can ask the uh, wholesaler retailer if they want it in a electronic version. You can email it back to them. It helps in the follow up. So um, I've also done hard copies too, it, uh, uh, and uh, that works well as, as well. But I, I think the electronic version, uh, with where we are today, is probably an easier and, and preferred way. Okay. Michelle, what about from your perspective? Absolutely. Just understand that they need to be um, kind of a high view, bullet points, and not 20 pages long because you won't have time to get through all of it. Um, so try to take it from, um, you know, a four to a six pager um, features, benefits of the particular items that you'd like to focus on. As Ed said, if you have 100 SKUs, you know you're not going to get through those in 10 minutes. When you've done your research, you probably have a good idea of what you want to present to each retailer. Um, so typically what I do is I make maybe 30 copies of it. Um, and for those uh, wholesaler retailer members who want to bring it back with them, they put it in their cubby, it gets shipped back to their offices. Um, I will say the vast majority tell us to send it electronically. 
Okay. And just so that everybody is aware, um, we do provide all our, all of our retailer wholesalers um, totes so that if there is a sample that you want to bring to them and leave with them, um, they have a tote that they're able to place that in and we ship it back to their office. They're, they also use the totes to take some of that hard copy presentation material they may want uh, to also ship back. And, and Mitch, I don't know, how do you prefer some of the materials that uh, are presented to you? Are you in electronic hard copy or both? I, I would rather have it at both, but uh, really preferred uh, electronic. Okay. But I, I go back to the presentation, you know, for us usually works much better uh, if it's electronic presentation, if it's on a, a laptop or an iPad, you know, it's, it's, it moves much quicker than someone looking for copies and trying to get, make sure we've got the right copies. You know, they already, they're, when they sit down and they've got an iPad or, or their laptop in front of them, they start immediately. So, you know, it's, it's much cleaner. Okay. Um, yeah, here's, here's an interesting question. Um, it sounds as though the wholesaler retailers have the tables during the CCCs and suppliers are the ones moving around. Is that correct? Yes, the wholesaler retailers are the ones sitting at the meetings, hosting the, the meetings at the tables. The supplier companies will be moving from meeting to meeting during the, the time that's called on your, on your schedule. Um, it says, how do we stand near our products during network events? Oh, wait, it says, do we leave um, samples or paperwork? Hopefully we've answered that question um, that you can leave it. The retailer wholesalers have their totes. Um, but probably the one question, and I think, you know, Mitch, you can probably address this is, um, you know, how do we stand near our products or what do we do during the network events, especially near the showcase? Do you want to explain? I think you have brought that up. So Yeah, as, as, as we go through the showcase, uh, the displays are set up in aisles. So as, as we move through each aisle to look at the items, look at the products, look at the display, uh, the, the suppliers can stand right there next to their item or right next to their display. And, you know, explain to us exactly, you know, what the item is, how it should be merchandised, how it should be marketed, and the benefits of the item. Okay. And just so that everybody understands, too, during the day, we kind of ask that the showcase room is just open to the retailer wholesalers. They do have time within their schedule um, to view that, that room during the day with their scanner so that they can look at items, discuss it between themselves, uh, scan the item, and that feedback they're able to have on their list um, they may also want to say, well, that was a cool item. I want to I'll then be able to have the time during the, the networking reception to have that discussion with the manufacturer also. So, um, so just to let everybody know, the, man, the retailer wholesalers do have a, a couple of opportunities um, during the day, um, during their pre-scheduled time. We ask them that there are no re, uh, supplier companies in the room, but then the networking reception allows that to happen um, at the same time. And Michelle or Ed, do you want to comment on that from a, a supplier standpoint? I think both of you, I know, take advantage of the all, all the other events, especially the networking receptions and the showcase reception. Yeah, I think it's important to um, attend way beyond just your CCC schedule. Um, you have so many opportunities to meet and greet retailers outside of those 10 minute meetings. So as Mitch said, if, if you are in that showcase floor next to your showcase and a buyer or a wholesaler retailer walks by and they have questions, you're there to answer it. The other cool thing about the, the showcase is um, the retailers have a little scanner and they can scan the items they're interested in. And then you will get um, a notice via um, email on your smartphone. So as Keith had said, it's a great way to circle back around and say, hey, this particular wholesaler retailer liked this item. I don't have a meeting with them. It's a good thing to put on your meeting request form. So I would definitely utilize those opportunities. Okay. Um, one question that came in here too that I'm, I'm, I'm watching the post. Um, a lot of people got their schedules, which is good to hear that everybody had their schedules. Um, but there's a question that says, what happens if there's, how do I find out who else is attending that I may not have had a meeting with? And I can probably answer that one best by if you go on to the, um, in the member area under the 2014 GM conference, um, under the My Conference Center area, there are, there is a list of uh, attendees. And I think there's a tab right there that says attendees. Um, and you can look it up by wholesaler retailer, by a supplier, and you can see who's attending from that company. You can click on their name, get their company profile, et cetera. So um, 
this way you'll be able to see everybody that's attending. Also on the, um, the conference mobile app, if you download the mobile app, all that information on attendees will also be there um, for you. Um, I've got another question here. Um, there's a question that says, and, and Mitch, you can probably answer this, are you know, retailers, wholesalers, um, are, are they required to stay through the, the length of the conference? Um, and will they be able to see everyone that they want to? And I know, Mitch, you addressed this a little bit earlier. I know you guys stay uh, right to the, to the end because you want to try to see as many come as you can. And I know sometimes it's not always possible. Sometimes a person may have to leave an hour or two before the end of the conference due to a flight. But why don't you give it from your perspective and from a board perspective as far as um, representation by the retail wholesale members? Well, retailer wholesaler members, they have some thresholds that uh, they have to maintain as far as their percentage of how many people they're seeing, uh, their appointment schedules. So there are some minimal requirements to you know, what what they they must see. Uh, again, I guess you know I can really only speak from our perspective. We're there to the end, uh, all the way through. You know, unless there's you know flight changes or something like that, we'll we'll our schedule will be 100 at least 110 percent of of the capability there. Right, and then I would probably answer that too. Some of our retailers that may have to leave, you know, earlier on Tuesday or something. Um, if there's a company that wants to see them, they usually try to accommodate. And I understand um, their schedules are pretty full to begin with, as 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 we said, but. We do a lot. We do have extra tables on the floor that allows them to break up meetings, to add a meeting, um, to make sure that they get to everybody that um, they want to see. So hopefully that we are able to accommodate as many of the meetings as possible. Not to say that we're going to be able to honor, you know, the, our wholesale retailers can book everything because there is some some constraints just from the amount of time that's available. But I think that's probably, you know, to bring up the other issue, and I'll, I'll probably address it now is, you know, besides even the showcase and networking reception, um, maybe from Michelle or Ed, how do you use the, the other times at the conferences? There's a number of other events, as I mentioned earlier, um, either lunches, breakfasts, um, during the store tours. Michelle, I think you've done store tours a couple times with some of the retailer wholesalers. Um, why don't you guys give your perspective? How do you use the other time at the conference? Well, it's a great time in a, in a more relaxed setting to, to meet with people. And uh, I think all the wholesaler retailers there are, are very approachable. I've never had a problem going up to someone and, uh, you know, introducing myself, telling them about our company, our products. And in that environment, you can, you can get as much or more done because you can have uh, sometimes less than 10 minutes, sometimes more in a right. network uh, atmosphere. So it's a great time to, uh, to meet people uh, at breakfast. They're just open seating. You can come up to any wholesaler retail and, and ask to join them and, and, and talk about your products then too. So uh, a lot of opportunities outside the CCC floor to do that. Okay. Michelle, how about you? Yeah, I would highly recommend if you're not playing golf. Um, the store tours are a very interesting way to see a couple of, um, typically they're members of GMDC, sometimes they're not, um, but we'll fill several minivans um, full of <laughs> wholesaler, retailer, and suppliers and get to a couple of stores. You have time to walk around, take a look at the store on your own. We usually get someone from that particular retailer to host the event so they can talk to you about their stores and their formats and how they go to market. Um, so I would highly recommend if you're open on Sunday afternoon that you join us for the store tours. Okay, terrific. Um, you know, one of the other questions that came in um, has a lot to do as far as the, the follow-up. Um, is there a specific, you know, Mitch, I know you said two to three weeks after um, Michelle and Ed, maybe you can give perspective because you meet with a lot more of the wholesaler retailers. Um, is there, do you want to be followed up immediately right after the conference or are you still into that recovery mode and you need a little bit of time or is there a certain time that you'd like to have people follow up with you? So Mitch, maybe I'll start with you first. Yeah, the, the next week is not the time to try to follow up, I can tell you that. Because <laughs> after we've been gone and you get back in the office, you know, there's so many other things pressing that you've got to catch up on. Uh, that's not the time to follow up. Uh, we really haven't organized everybody we've seen and, uh, and gone through our objectives for items. Uh, I think, the you know, but like I said, you know, two to three weeks later, 
is the time to, to start trying to follow up. Uh, you know, give us a little breathing room. Okay. Ed and Michelle? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking that person on the other side of the table, when would you like me to follow up with you? Because they'll be pretty clear about the constraints. And But I would say typically you are, you're not doing yourself any favors by trying to do it the week after. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to go too long, obviously, but, uh, you know, a week or two after gives everybody time to digest it. The other thing I think is important is to be as specific as possible. Don't just say, hey, we met at GMDC um, because Mitchell had met with 200 people. So be as specific about what you talk about in your meeting. Okay. And I, and I think from both of your perspective, from Michelle, Ed, from a supplier perspective, Mitch, from a wholesaler retailer perspective, um, there's also this point where maybe right now it's, it's not the right match or the promotion's not right or the item's not right. Um, I, I think you're all open to that point of also knowing if it's a no at this point um, so that you're not wasting time following up if there's if not a no and to make sure that both of you state that uh, in one way or the other. So anybody want to comment on that? I say I've seen no's both ways. Uh, you know, after we started talking and, and telling the supplier exactly who we are and what we do, you know, they'll look at us and you can, you can almost see it in their eyes that it does, it's no match there. Right. And uh, it was same thing from our side. And once we hear, you know, the item and, uh, and take a look at it and look at, you know, where it's marketed and, you know, what the, their consumer is going to be, uh, we know pretty quick if it's a no. So don't, don't, you know, don't take that at the, the wrong way, but we'll, we'll try to save you time and uh, you'll do the same with us if, if we're not a match. Right. Okay, um, I have a couple questions I can probably answer and uh, I'm sure there'll be more. Um, some individuals are asking online, you know, can I download the profiles of, of a company? Um, you can actually uh, copy it. I don't think you can download it exactly right now, every um, uh, piece of the company's profile. We are continuing to work to develop to have that capabilities. Um, so those type of ideas and feedback um, as a member, we'd like to hear. Um, because it allows us to uh, to be able to service you better as far as information. The question about the mobile app: When will it be available? It's not you know available. I don't think right now, but it will be. We'll make sure that you just watch your announcements. Um, if you're not aware, every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, there is a My GMBC communication. Usually, we try to put that information in there. But you will also be getting a communication when the mobile app is available for download, and we can give you a QR code so you can download it um, both prior to the conference um, and at the conference. Um, and it will be once it's available, also available on the the conference web page at the same time. Um, one, of the, there's a couple of questions too as far as dress code, um, it, because we uh, in most cases are down south in Florida or in this in Texas for the upcoming GM meeting. Um, it's all business casual. Uh, from a dress code standpoint, um, you want to be comfortable. It's a nice time to have an out-of-the-office setting to be able to have a comfortable uh, business setting, but it is a business casual type um, dress attire. Um, this year for the General Merchandise Conference, we are going to uh, doing something different for the uh, evening with the chairman event. Um, that night, some people will usually you know, wear a sport jacket or, or something for that evening, but this year we're doing a little bit something different. We're going to the Knibby Ranch which is a working ranch. Um, and that night we'll also let everybody know, we'll put a notice out on this that um, feel free to wear your best Western wear um, because uh, we are going to a ranch. So we will dress accordingly uh, for that evening. Um, I think that's about all the questions I see here online right now. Um, we have uh, just a few more minutes within our hour that we had said for, uh, for this session. Um, so I'll probably just uh, turn it back over just one more time to each of our panelists and just ask if there's anything else you'd like to add for anybody uh, as far as what you think are some, some best practice suggestions that you may have for them. So um, Mitch, again, thank you for your time. Um, any closing uh, comments you'd like to provide for any of the attendees? I'll just reiterate uh, exactly you know, what we said before. Get there, be prepared when you get there. And at the end of it, follow up. I think those are the two two biggest things to remember uh, to, to keep engaged. Okay. 
Um, Ed, from your perspective, uh, again, thank you for your time. Um, everybody will look forward to seeing you at the conference, I'm sure. And I know you'll be very visible because uh, representing the membership advisory board, you want to hear the input. But uh, any closing comments you'd like to provide? Yes. Um, the conference is a very well-organized and well-orchestrated event, but it stays that way because everyone is very courteous of everyone else's time. So it's very important when you have a 10-minute meeting that you be on time, but also that you don't go over the 10 minutes because there's someone else waiting to meet with that wholesaler retailer right behind you. So make sure you start on time, end on time. And I've been attending GMDC for 15 years, and I hope all of you find it as beneficial as we do. Terrific. Michelle, again, thank you for your time. Any uh, closing comments you'd like to provide? I would say attend every function that you can and have fun because it is a very fun conference. And um, bring your cowboy boots because the ranch, I had the privilege of going to the ranch uh, a year ago with the Health, Beauty, and Wellness Group. It's a blast. Um, and I will say that all of us are available at any time for questions. You can find all of our contact information on the GMDC website. If you want to call up me personally or anyone else that's been on this uh, webcast, trust me, we welcome your calls. You can ask anything you need to ask so that you feel like you're fully prepared when you get there and have a good time. Terrific. Well, again, uh, Mitch, Ed, Michelle, thank you for your time and input. Um, I appreciate it. I, I would like to remind everybody on, on this call um, that the GMDC staff is here available at the office to answer any questions you may have also as you prepare for the conference. We want to make sure that uh, you do have a successful event. Um, we want to make sure your questions are answered. So feel free to do that. I think as Michelle said, um, and I, I provided earlier, you're going to see uh, once you get to the conference, staff is available but also all the members um, and especially the board of directors and all the advisory board members, um, including Mitch, Ed and Michelle, um, they'll be noted on their badges. Um, please feel free to approach any of them at any time um, on suggestions to make intro an introduction maybe that you'd like to have um, and use that time available. And then finally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one other opportunity and request is um, today you're viewing a video cast through GMDC Connect. Um, this service is free to everybody, um, and it's, it's another great way to continue your connections both um, after the meeting, because you can connect with any of the retail wholesale member or supplier member just at the click of a button from a calendar request, hopefully like you did today to come into this meeting, um, that you can actually connect with members throughout the year using this video conference service. You can share your presentations, et cetera. So it's another great way to continue that connection and keep that face-to-face -face interaction um, at the same time. And, and uh, you can not only bring on just one person. Um, Mitch today is in Florida. Ed is on uh, one side of Florida. Ed is actually based on the other side of Florida. And Michelle's in, in Reno. And I'm in Colorado. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great service that's now available to all the members. And I ask that you, uh, when you get to the conference, if you're not aware of it, to uh, inquire more about uh, GMDC Connect. So again, we look forward to seeing everybody um, at the upcoming conference. Um, please, if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, thank you for your time today. And again, Mitch, Ed, Michelle, thank you for your time. Um, and we look forward to everybody uh, having a great time at the conference. Have a great day and have a great weekend coming up. Thanks, everybody.